Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. We are back together again, the three amigos, because all of you asked for it. You give us great feedback. So you know what? If you want us to do this again next week, you have to leave a comment below. We need to get 100 comments. If we don't get 100 comments, we're not coming back. Just kidding. <laughs> but let's have some fun. Let's see if we get to 100 comments uh, and see what's going on. What we're going to do here is we're going to talk about best deal, worst deal. Uh, so we'll start with worst deal because everybody wants to go negative these days. So Dion, you want to talk about the worst deal you've done today? Sure. First, I think I need to come up with about 90 comments that I can leave in the <laughs> comments for this. But the worst deal would be my first one. I had moved into an apartment to rent out the house to see if I could handle being a landlord you know, while working full time and being a single parent and then wasn't making a lot of money. So that rental income on my tax returns would help my debt to income ratio. So like I had a plan but I didn't see myself as a landlord yet. So I didn't run it like a business. And I rented the house to a friend because oh. I can't trust a stranger. Of and course. it was a handshake, not a lease, not even a lease, just a handshake. He was also a single parent. So when rent was late, I thought, well, I understand the struggle. So late became never. When I finally went to the house to have a conversation to figure out, you know, let's get this resolved. He didn't even live there. He had moved out, rented the house to someone else. He was collecting rent, keeping it. He had started projects. There was half a wall in the loft with a door right at the top of the stairs, not to code. Like some rooms were half painted. Uh, it was such a bad experience. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll rent to the new tenant. So maybe I just had one bad experience. In three months, I collected $700 from her. I tried to quit. I tried to give the house away. <laughs> it was around 2010. Ah, I was underwater on yes. the mortgage. Luckily, I couldn't give it away was stuck with the house, found a tenant, actually screened a tenant, started reading, uh, you know, bigger pockets, uh, blogs, I didn't even have videos yet, educated myself because that was my problem. That's now a paid off rental, rented to a section eight tenant, earning me 1890 a month. Uh, nice. So it's not my best deal, but it's a lot better than it was when it started out. <laughs> Lots of lessons there. And again, I love the fact that it was so bad, you tried to get rid of it. And then you could it. you were stuck with it. And now it makes almost two grand a month. Oh, that sucks. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Dion, but, Dion wins. Uh, yeah, Dion wins. <laughs> we win. We try. We try yeah, to God, we'll move on. Next segment. <laughs> um, my okay. worst deal was my, uh, so I did, a, I did a single family first, then I did a triplex, then I did another triplex. Okay. My worst deal was that, second triplex uh oh oh yeah that was the worst remember mike when we talked about the day that it was the absolute highest oh, market yeah, be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were that guy you were the one at the very I top i was the only one who closed the deal that day it was right there at the very tippy tippy top <laughs> <laughs> i literally said to the guy it was my and, and this is completely embarrassing and so i'll make sure to share it um, I course. literally said to the guy, I go, all right, so you want 350. Will you get, I said, I, I need you to give me some sort of discount. He goes, 349.5. How about that? <laughs> he got a discount. <laughs> I was like, I literally was like, I couldn't get my hand out of my pocket fast enough. And I was like, I suck. I'm the worst. I just, I just took, I just took literally a $500 discount on a $350,000 asset. What kind of a jackass am I? Oh my <laughs> word. Yeah. It was the absolute worst. Oh, yeah. And goodness. so I bought that property. He goes, Hey, he goes, <clears throat> I put a tenant in the first floor unit. And he goes, and as you know, the, you know, the other two are the other two are month to month, but they're good. They pay their rent. They're good. Mm. Um, within, within uh, 60 days, I had zero paying tenants. <laughs> two, two were empty and and the units were destroyed. And the first, <laughs> and the first floor just stopped paying. <laughs> just, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And this was in like, Oh, this was in Oh, uh, Oh six. So this was in Oh yeah. six. It, it bled into Oh six. And so, yeah. So I actually, that was a property that I ended up having to hold until, um, until 2018. And the best part was, is that in that time. Um, so I redid the unit, blah, 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 redid all the units. I got people rented the whole nine yards. Um, I rented to a couple that are just like, Matt, we're in our late fifties. We, you know, not to creep you out, but we want to die here. They're like, we're going to be here for 20 years. And I was like, all right, sounds good. <clears throat> their daughter got in some trouble. They brought in their granddaughter 
And because she was hanging out in the slums and that's where the rest of her family was, she ended up getting a positive lead test. Oh no. Yeah. And so they actually came out, they gave me a positive uh, flag test and they tested the entire building and then they flagged the building. And so then I had to take those tenants that I just moved in. I had to pay to move them out, move them into another place. And then at the time, the state of New Hampshire only had five registered contractors to do lead work. Oh. And so it was round robin. So yeah. we all know how much I paid. The tippy, tippity top. Yeah. So I paid $50,000 to have that house deleted. And that oh. was an, and they took nine months. Oh, Yeehaw. My. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. Okay, Matt, you, you win now. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that hurt. <laughs> oh, that was the worst. And so I had to hold, and so no joke, when I sold that thing, I, I, I lost just to, because they, we had gotten 15 years of appreciation, but I still didn't get back to, oh, six levels. Right. And so yeah. all I got was basically the fact that we paid off the mortgage for 12 years. And so I still got a check, but I had to, it was um, that, yeah, it was, it was all a horrible, horrible experience. I'm curious, since you suffered through that lead, uh, lead paint flag, did you change how you inspected properties shortly thereafter? Did you go in and look for lead after that? <laughs> so what we did was, we actually went through the process and moving forward thereafter, we would actually go through the process of, you know, hiring a demo crew and have them come in and they would rip all the baseboard. Uh, they'd rip okay. all the doors. They'd rip everything unless we knew that it had been replaced since 1979. Okay. Cause they use that special $10,000 gun where they stick it right up to it and they shoot yep. it and it can go 30, it can go 30 layers of paint deep. So okay. if it's ever been painted with lead, you're in trouble. And here right. in the Northeast, like we talk about, when you talk about an older home, you're not talking about something that was built in the 70s. You're talking about something that was built in the 1870s. Yeah. Old. So I no, promise. You, you got some old homes. <laughs> old homes. Like I'm literally looking, I looked at one a couple of days ago that was built in 1837. 1837. Yeah. And it's a nice house. It's in great shape, like built properly. Like it's, it's legit, you know, old, old, oh, yeah. uh, old, old uh, granite pieces yeah. form the basement. So yeah, not to steal the entire segment, but yeah, I, so when I made a mistake, it was a massive colossal, almost bankrupt me that we had to fight through that for almost a year. And that's yeah. where we were living on McDonald's dollar menus for our monthly treats. Our yeah. Treats. Wow. So my worst deal actually is one I talked about in the book, but via a different lens. Mine was when I, my first commercial building. So it was only five units, but it was commercial because mm -hmm. I'd only been in houses. Yeah. My experience with houses, why? Because that's where I lived in one. So I bought, that's what I bought. And then they got too expensive. So I moved into a five unit and I didn't have mentors. I didn't know anyone. And I assumed running a five unit building was the same as running a house. And guess what? It's not. The expense structure is entirely different. The hassle factor is entirely different. Yeah. And, um, you know, my, mm -hmm. let's just say my cash flow numbers weren't anywhere close for 18 to 24 months. And the first year was a loser. Lost, lost money every month um, because I didn't know. I just yeah. didn't know, right? And, you know, still own the property today. Happy I do. But yeah, it was um, when you change asset types or I would guess even states, you've really got to realize your experience to date isn't going to translate very well. And, and my experience with, you know, I think by that time we were in the business five years and we probably had had 20 tenants, maybe 22, like, you know, some stayed, some changed, but the turnover was low. I think I had 22 tenants in the first year of that five plex. <laughs> it's like, they just kept but like, what's going on? Why do I keep having to change this? <laughs> Crazy. It was, it was, that was an experience. That was so, that was, that was not fun. No, it's not, not fun. No, I was literally going to work, Mike, to, I mean, every dollar that I made from my job, my W2 job, was paying for that, was paying for that mortgage. Oh yeah. Was paying for those other, and, and they're supposed to pay rent when you'd relocate them in the existing building. They did not. Of course. Yeah. And so I was paying the mortgage and paying rents. Yeah. yeah. I was, I thank God I was, you know, I was working my butt off on my job just to mi literally make the bill every single month for people that weren't paying me rent, but I had to pay their rent somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was taking money from my W-2 job to fund that five units. And oh, yeah. the good news is the experience was uh, learned quickly. <laughs> and I didn't make that mistake on the 10 and the 18 and the 13. We, we ran better numbers, got better deals. But yeah, that was, um, let's just say my, it, it was the, it was the one time in real estates, I thought I had conservative expectations, 
and I was grossly overvalued, <laughs> grossly overvalued. <laughs> that was bad. Oh, that was bad. Oh, that's All right. So let's flip the script uh, and we'll go back to Dion and talk about the best deal you've done. My best deal, I blame on Mike. Oh, no, no. You blame <laughs> on me? <laughs> so, I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> I closed on a fourplex in January of 2020 and I had like $200 in my bank. A bank account. I had I had dropped down. I was using my credit cards as a reserve. I had you know I had a I have a paid off property, so I had I I had a plan just in case. Yeah. And prices started to skyrocket at the beginning of 2020. Sure. A pandemic hits. People don't have to pay their rent. They can't be evicted, and prices are going up. So my brain, in a scarcity mindset, said, "Don't buy. Hmm. Sit back and wait for the crash, like all the other people that are going to lose." <laughs> yeah, that would have worked out well. <laughs> Somebody right. watched Ken McElroy's video. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> And so I started, uh, income snowball was kicking in. I was saving up money. I emptied out my 401k because lucky with the CARES Act, you could take money yeah. out and not pay a penalty. And I was impacted by COVID because my company was shut down for a few weeks. Saved up money. But I, around June or July, you were talking about how interest rates were coming down. And that we buy on return where a home buyer buys on price. But yeah. the prices are staying the same even with, as the rates come down because, well, the prices go up, the cost stays the same. So I started looking at returns and I found a triplex. My goal is always to get a 10% or better cash on cash return to buy a place that's rent ready or already occupied. This place is getting a 17% return. It's already occupied. I did less than a thousand dollars a worth of work to it. It's had one. Oh, no make ready. Then. Nothing, nice. not, nothing like, um, I haven't even used the binder strategy yet. So at current rents uh, or just wow. at, at asking price offer it appraised, so 525 was the price for 540. So whatever that is, though it appraised higher than what I paid for it. Wow. 15 grand. I never would have even made the offer if I wasn't watching one rental at a time to see, oh, there's another way to look at this as an investor. And so I've been investing nice. for years and hadn't looked at it that way. Oh, so that's so happy. I'll that's take nice. that blame. You could blame me for that. I'll take that. <laughs> one. Okay, good. I wasn't sure where we were going, but I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Weird. How about you, Matt? Um, so my best one, I think ever was one that we found, we bought, we saw it hit the market at, um, midnight and, uh, my broker and I are broken. And so we were texting each other <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, You're an animal said, midnight. Yeah, Take it off, midnight. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and I said, he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, you want to see this? I was like, absolutely. So we go, we see it write an offer. We were jerks. We had the offer expire in like seven hours. Um, but, but yeah, we wanted to get ahead of it. And so we did, and, uh, we ended up buying it or I ended up buying it for a two fifty. Okay. Um, and it was a, a four, four bed, three bath, single family with a two bed, one bath, um, apartment off the back. I also had a two car garage and a little yard. So it was just like a, an interesting hybrid property. Yeah. Um, really hard to find, not repeatable at all, really. Um, but <clears throat> bought that deal, 250, um, closed nice. on it November 30th. Um, so we bought that deal for 250, closed November 30th. I put 65,000 bucks into it. I was into it for 315 and we sold it off market, no broker, 550. And we did that. Uh, we did So that was November 30th. We closed. We went under contract in March and we closed at the end of April. So you're out, you're out of the deal. Out. out. Wow. And that was a deal that I bought with every intention of renting it out because it's my model. It's the duplex. Yeah. I mean, it's the perfect, like, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect house for renting. Um, Cause you can get that great single family home price because the yeah. two bedroom is so disconnected. You can get that perfect single bed, you know, single family price, two car garage yard. I mean, it, a great school district. Like it was perfect. And the comps just kept on calling my name every single time, every single week I was doing, you know, the homework extra <laughs> refresh, on the comps. Refresh. <laughs> and I'm just like, they just got what for that? Holy crap. There's nothing's ever traded for that. Wow. And so the, it just kept on itching up and inching up and inching up. And so, yeah, we ended up doing 550, um, no broker off market. Wow. And so, yeah, it was. And so that actually 1031 and then I 1030, oh, cool. I 1031 that into four properties. That's wow. That, there you go. Jeff, drop the mic. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think the best deal for me, 
uh, again, the beauty of growing your network, right? And being a proven entity. So this, what I'm about to go through is what I think happens to multifamily in three years. So as I tell this story, realize I've been through it and I think it happens again in, 20, in 2023 or 2024. So, okay, the housing market blows up, right? 07, 08. What people don't realize is multifamily also had a hiccup, but it was a couple of years later. So um, I receive a phone call from a bank. Literally, the, I think the, secre the secretary for the bank president called me and says, basically says, is this Michael Zuber? I said, yes. Says, uh, we understand you're an investor in Fresno. Uh, we believe you've bit, bought a couple of our properties over the last 12 months, right? Yes, I have. I, I Thank you very much. It's kind of an odd call. I mean, like, <laughs> where are we going with this? I, I, no bank has ever called me. Yeah. I have no idea where we're going. Hey, Mike, and, we don't have clear title. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what I'm expecting. A, we forgot to sign something and, you know, yeah. whatever. But she goes, would you be willing to, would you be willing to, would you entertain buying a multifamily property? I said, yeah, I own several of them, of course, for the right price. I mean, he goes, can you meet our bank president, so-and-so, uh, at this address tomorrow? And I'm like, I can't do tomorrow because, again, I'm out of town, right? I live three hours away. I have a day job, but I can meet him there Saturday. They go, okay, great. What time? Blah, blah, blah. So, okay, I meet the bank president. He shows up Saturday in a suit. It's like, huh, this guy's, this guy's serious. I would have come in in a polo shirt. I was not in a suit, by the way, not in a suit. Um, but he says, you know, hi, you know, I, I hear good things. You've done well by us. Uh, this is a building that we are, we are the lender on and we're going to have to foreclose. So I had done my research on the building. It was sold at the peak of the market for $1.4 million. Oh. Um, it was collecting, I think at the time, right around 10 grand, right? So about 120 K a month. And, um, near as I can tell the owner who bought it did a 75% first with the bank and then put a second on with someone else who was, who was about to get wiped out. So the, the bank president goes, um, we would like to get rid of this building. Um, we're going to, you know, it's, it's going to be an REO, but we want it. We would like to sell it before we complete it was basically their story because they didn't want to add it to their books. They wanted to add it for the shortest time possible. I said, great, well, let's see what we're dealing with. So here I am walking through an 18 unit building, which had been basically abandoned. Not, it wasn't abandoned because there were people living there, but it was abandoned from an ownership perspective. It had not been treated well for probably a year because the person knew he was going to lose it. Probably was collecting a thousand bucks, if that a month for over a year. So it was, it was the most disgusting property I've ever seen. I mean, there was several units that had small cats and dogs that just did their thing in the unit. Um, it was, it was horrible. And again, there, this bank president is going through it in his suit and, and I'm sure nice shoes and all this. I'm like, you really want to go inside these units? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm expecting to go through three or four and him to back out. Right. It's like, okay, I've seen enough. I'm like, no, we go through all 18. I'm like, wow, you're a trooper. Cause I didn't even want to go through 18. I was just curious to see how long you were going to go. <laughs> And then he goes, you know, we get out, we go back across the street, literally talk in front of my car. And he goes, would you be interested? I mean, I, I go, well, good news is I bought stuff like this, right? REOs are usually rough. So nothing I saw today scares me. I can tackle all of it. But I go, I have no idea what you want for it, right? We haven't talked price. We, hadn't, we didn't mention price at all at this point. And he goes, well, I've already gotten my bank to agree uh, that we can write this off if we can get $700,000. Oh. I'm like, interesting, 700, sold for 1.4, interesting. At 3%? <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. And I said, uh, you know, I said, you know what? I think I, 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 you know, I'd be willing to give you 700. However, um, I need you to be the lender. I want you to do a loan with me at 700 grand for nothing down. He goes, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. I'm like, did you not see those units? No bank in their right mind is going to finance this transaction. And if you're going to get a cash buyer in this market, which was 2010, you're going to take 500 or 550 and your job's going to be on the line, right? Because mm -hmm. you'll get fired if you get less than 700. I said, I put, you know, I, I could encumber other properties. I could do this. I could do that. You give me the first mortgage at, at you know, 700, which you did. And then, and discount the rate, which was like, I think rates were like 6%. He gave me five, right? So I got everything right. I could, but he says, I need assurances that you're going to do the work or the bank's not going to agree. I said, how about this? 
again, zero down. And I will, but, but I will put the first $50,000 of repair money in an escrow account, which you can manage. And I will give you work orders every week until the 50,000 is gone. And he goes done. (laughs) So I got an 18 unit building zero down. I ended up spending about 70 grand in the repairs and we own the property today. It's, it's almost worth 2 million bucks. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It was, you know, again, right. We spent so my yield calculation is, is pretty cool, right? I only put about <laughs> you know 70 grand in it or whatever it was. So that's that is my best deal. So yes, I have done a zero down multifamily building. And again, what I'm trying to share in this story is the pain to multifamily is coming. This yeah. person overpaid, interest rates changed, expenses, and they could hold for a while, but eventually it's gonna blow up. Uh, so I expect I expect to repeat that cycle a lot, but it won't be for a couple of years. So that's why I'm buying houses today because I want to 1031 into those things later. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to have an asset that's going to increase in value that you can swap out of. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Yeah. So what do you guys think? what do you think, Dion? I think, and this hopefully isn't too far off topic of you moving into the multifamily like that, but your relationship with the bank, their awareness of your investing patterns is what brought that deal to you. Oh, and without a question. Brand new investor a brand new investor who has done no deals, the way they treat the first few agents they interact with, the way they treat their lenders, years later down the road, that's going to impact the way people bring things to them or the or the name of the person that you're rude to today is going to show up on a transaction in your future when they have control of something. So uh, that where was were awesome. You, where were you 10 years ago, Dan, with that advice? Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm so glad you brought that up because I, I bring it up all the time that real estate's a people business. Yeah. I do not bring up enough that your reputation is what Huge. you need to value. So as you're building it out, you know, one bad conversation, one, one sour taste can ruin 20, 30, 40 potential relationships. So value that. So yeah, again, just by being somebody who performed on a couple of, I'm sure, great houses. And I don't even remember which houses I bought from. I still don't know where that phone call came from, right? right? I really don't. I don't know what happened at the bank that made them call me, but I'm so glad they did. Um, so yeah, reputation matters. 100%. So, yeah. So, so uh, guys, how can they find you, be a part of your world? We'll go to Matt first. Lumberjacklandlord.com and Lumberjacklandlord on YouTube and in Mike's One Rental at a Time course house hackologist and the 4321 house hacking strategy. Very cool. And Dion? Well, um, as many threesomes as were happening <laughs> with between us, I should do an OnlyFans page for us. <laughs> but, but no, the It'll best be the way only, to get a hold of me. OnlyFans with only no fans. subscribers. <laughs> right. Yeah, with zero subscribers. No, no, no. We, we could get paid to keep our clothes on and stay in separate rooms. Like, I've got a plan. <laughs> I, I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, reverse yeah. OnlyFans. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I'm active in the Bigger Pockets groups and uh, maybe not after they hear this, but the Real Estate Rookie group on Facebook and the official Bigger Pockets uh, Facebook group and here on YouTube, at Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And you are the creator of the self management course in my course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. Yes, I was really honored then that you asked me to do that. And it actually helped me kind of put into words my systems, which is something I hadn't done before that. Yeah, this, that was awesome. So thank you very much, guys. I look forward to uh, the next topic, which is actually going to be Dion's topic. So thanks, buddy. Sounds good.